What is up, everybody? Sis Edmund and Sean here, and today we are more than likely in the final episode of the open HPC build. I appreciate everyone staying around this long to watch all the different parts. Uh, I loved all the comments along the way so far, and please enjoy this uh, this hopefully last episode. If not, we might even have like a post mortem episode, which I think might be fun too to discuss what worked, what different, what what didn't work, what excuse me, we changed things like that. So today, the steps we're going to be doing are getting the nodes ready to provision and installing some extra tools. I'm very familiar with SPAC, but I'm going to go ahead and install these other ones just so you can see them get installed, even though it's really just yum. Um, and then kind of go over what SPAC does. Um, and the reason we'll do this version as opposed to a regular version. So essentially what they want us to do is set up our gateway dev for this temp network file and then import that into the network for um, the compute nodes and then set that path and configure it. And then the, this two, these two rows right here is this insanity line, which is cool. It makes a lot of sense and you should definitely do this, uh, especially if you have all of this stuff pre-documented out in a really good way uh, to, to dump in all of this info. Um, it will build out all the nodes for you in one line. And then this will do the same thing. So you'll say provision set, set compute regex, which we did decide up here, comp regex. We just did node zero because all of our nodes are node zero, one, two, three, four. Um, we can do all that, plug all this info in and then go to town. Now I'm going to show you a different way to do it um, so that you can kind of get the the understanding of what all of this actually means. And because I feel a little bit more comfortable doing it manually as opposed to doing it um, in in their way. So ETH provision is going to be ENS 18. We'll copy this line and we will go over to our Mobax term. Oh yeah, one other thing I want to check. So it's running and it's listening. Look at that. Hmm, now that's not what I want it to do. I may have messed something up. We're going to have to find that out via errors for sure. Okay, anyway, paste. I think it might have been this, to be perfectly honest. But let's see what happens. And again, we're uh, we're doing some werewolf file imports. Um, these are all things we can change. Uh, when we need to, which is really nice. And then there's this node command and I'm not doing it. So let's go back into this node list, node help. So we want to do a new node node. Now the one struggle here is that you can't copy and paste into this. So if you want to go out and do WWSH dash Y node, you can do all these commands. So if we Let's build a command. So we WSH dash Y node new node zero 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 one, I think is what we decided on. And we know it's net device. It's gonna be ENS18. And we have the hardware addresses. Let me grab that. And then we want to so we can figure that. Well, that's interesting. Unknown option. Did I mistype that? Oh, I did. There we go. And then we'll do it for all of our nodes. So we'll up the line. We'll start node two. I'm very concerned that I got myself all twisted up on these networking device names. And I really should have just fixed it from the beginning. And these are just Mac addresses that existed in Proxmox when I built the VMs. So they're just dead VMs right now. They're not doing anything. They're not booted. So now that that's set, we have to configure some more of the provisioning. So we do WSH Y node set to node zero one dash D E well ENS eighteen dash I ten dot zero dot zero dot two because ten dot zero one is the head node, and the gateway is going to be. 10.0.0.1. And then we can also do netmask 
e equals two five five two five five two five five zero. And then we'll do that for two having IP three, which again I know is confusing. And then three having the IP of four. <laughs> there we go. So now that we've set all that, we've configured their networking functionality. So we've told it exactly what IP address we want each MAC address to get when it boots so that it knows how to deploy it, but it doesn't know what to deploy on it yet. So if we go back to our sheet, let me grab the line. They have this wonderful little line that will let us say, if it matches node zero, then assign that stuff and the bootstrap and then another line because they wanted to fit it out here and make sure that it gets the following files from Werewolf. No nodes found. I think I've got to do node star. Yeah. So now if we go to WWSH provision list, we'll see there are nodes. We have node one in here twice for some reason. Okay, so uh node. I don't know how I did that. <laughs> the real trick is how do I delete the incorrect one? node delete node zero one. I guess I just have to delete them both. Could not chmod pixie Linux configuration file, no such file directory, deleted two nodes. So now if we do node list, oh no, we've lost node one. So we'll go back. We will configure node one properly. Oh wait. new node, set node. And then we have to run this provision line again. There, now we do WWSH provision list. We should only have one node one, yay. And if we do WWSH node list, yay, cool. So now we have an image ready and the provisioning ready. And if I haven't screwed anything up, which is probably impossible, we should be able to boot node one and watch it actually pull an image. But I have a feeling that we are going to see not that, to be perfectly honest. But we'll boot it up and we'll see what happens. <clears throat> so let's look in the pixie boot. Let's see if it gets found. taking a little bit longer than I want it to. Yeah, that's that's a that's a big fail there. All right. So, we will troubleshoot and figure out what I've done wrong and we'll be right back. And we're back. Sorry about that, folks. It took me a few seconds to figure out what was going on, but we figured it out and if you'd like to see, you'll notice that this is already provisioned, but we'll go ahead and log in real quick and reboot it. So you can see OpenHPC provision this uh, as a node. Boom, 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 boom. And from this point, I know it's gonna work. So we'll go into discussing what was wrong and what I had to do to fix it. Um, the first thing that was wrong, and we will go over to the other screen to show that off, is the firewall was turned off which is a problem for me. Um, I've never had it work with the firewall off. It always has to be enabled. Now, one thing that's wrong on mine is that both interfaces are on the same firewall network, the same zone. I don't recommend this, but it works fine. You just have to put all the ports on both interfaces, which means you could cause some provisioning issues down the road. I recommend, you know, making your internal one more an internal zone, your public one, your external interface, the one that can interact with the rest of your network, things like that. Um, and as far as ports that you need, 
Here is the list that works for me. This gives you NFS, DHCP, TFT, um, HTTP. Yeah, and yeah, that's about it. And I'll put that in, in, the, uh, in the description for this video. Um, some other things folks had questions about was, um, what do you need to change if you need to modify any of your networking? So one of the things you need to change is your DHCP config. So if we go to dhcpd.conf, this subnet needs to be set. And you also need to make sure that it is using the correct interface for said subnet. Now these entries will get put in as you provision nodes. So don't change these here. Change these via Werewolf and then commit the changes to the DHCP zone using WWSH DHCP. Um, and let's see, what other spot did I need to change something in here? I think that was about it. And it just sort of, it took, I believe I disabled IPv6 across the board just because I don't need it and I didn't want it to cause any problems. Uh, yeah. And then another thing that I had a problem with, and that's because I suck, is I didn't have any good D DNS servers set up. So I had to build host files for everything for the main, main node so that it could figure out host names and IP addresses and all that. But if we go back over to this, we should be, yep, and there we are. We are provisioned. Now, if you'd like to see what that looks like once you are on a cluster, check this out. So you do sinfo dash ln, and there we go. It shows node two is down, which is fine because we just provisioned it. I still need to kick off some commands. Node two is idle and three and four are unknown because I haven't provisioned them in. And we can even look at our queue. So that's getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. Let's go back a couple of steps. So once you get your provisioning done, you have to start provisioning Slurm. And Slurm has some stuff you provision via the Slurm config file and Etsy Slurm, slurm.conf. So we set our Slurm CTLD host, open HPC. That's another reason you need your host file set up. And then we're not changing too much in here right now. That's for a whole other video. The main thing is down here, you have to configure your, um, your node information. And you need to put in your node names and fill this in and how many sockets and how many cores and how many threads. And then you have to configure the partition name. And that's how you organize your nodes. So you can say, for example, you want to run a cluster with 500 nodes and some are super heavy memory. Some are super heavy cores. Some are maybe a different architecture like AMD versus Intel. Some have GPU. Well, you can connect them all to the same Slurm server. You just have to partition them out so that one, your researchers know where they can point to a bunch of different nodes at once. Because what they'll do is they'll write these Slurm batch scripts and they'll say, if they don't put anything, a partition normal is usually set as your default partition. And it'll just go, okay, cool. I'm just gonna put it in there. But let's say they need something that works on GPUs. Usually you'll make a partition called GPU and then they'll configure, say, make sure we're pointing to partition GPU. I'm gonna need two nodes. I'm gonna need four GPUs from that node. Run this command, bang. And it does that. And this is a really basic one. I don't have stuff like memory amounts locked down in here. I don't have, I do have a max run time, but I can also, but exclusive over subscription is available. It's, it's a lot of silly stuff there. Now, the reason node one is down is probably either because the munch service hasn't started or the slurm service hasn't started because I haven't properly configured them to start on boot. So, but we can do this, go straight to node one. Is my munch is running, okay. Slurm D is not. Well, it's active, but it's error returning to service once specified. Okay. So it's running, but not quite running. And it's because the node configuration is different from my slow, my Slurm config. And that's because I was tinkering with stuff. So we'll leave that like it is. But there you can see a great error code that actually tells you what's wrong and how to fix it. <laughs> but we can go back in here and we can still look at our nodes and we have node two up. So at this point, the cluster's kind of done. 
but we don't really have any software to to do anything with. So that's where this like last step on the spreadsheet comes in. What is up everybody? This is Sean from the editing booth right now. I just wanted to record a little segment here. I'm wrapping this video up a little abruptly because I was going to attach a whole lot of extra footage to cover one single topic, but I think what I'm gonna do is cut right here at the end and turn that into a second video for y'all for next week because it's kind of a separate topic. So just wanted to give a big thank you to everybody for watching this video. I hope you're enjoying it. I'm enjoying making it. Uh, I wish I was making them a little bit faster, but that's on me. I've got to get in that grind mindset. So uh, leave your comments below. Let me know uh, what you're enjoying about this. I do believe I have some more Proxmox videos coming up as well. Uh, I learned some new stuff about Proxmox in the last couple of days that probably other people knew about, but I hadn't really dabbled in. So we'll have to get that set up as well as probably some updates on what our environment at my real work is going to be doing. Uh, if I'm allowed to talk about it, I'll have to check, but I'll, I'll know before I release the video, obviously. Uh, but that information's coming as well. And maybe some new stuff. I've been reading about things like Open Nebula and just using KVM with Open Nebula, Open Shift, been learning a lot about Docker and Portainer, things like that. So we're going to stick all that into another video down the road, but ending this one right here. So thanks again, and we'll see you in the next one.